Good evening. Am I back in? Just in, not sure where we are. We had some technical glitches. This is Dr. Brenda Miller Chambliss coming to you from this is the Embassy Christian Center's Wednesday, Thursday night Bible study. This is the Thursday night Bible study that is set aside to minister to the women in the body, women in our congregation, women that are watching via television, women that are watching via social media women that are watching bodybuilders on i'm sorry that are watching embassy tv on tonight gonna make sure we don't get this thing Bible study now click here for whatever reason maybe God is trying to tell us something you know I try and um, I try and go on <laughs> I try and go on with our Bible study to let people know but you know what I'm going to do what I can do is I can go back I can go back after the fact and I'm going to use this and uh, in and as a watch party so for those that do not get a chance to watch it on social media i will just pre-record this and i will use it as a watch party i may have to edit it because i think they only allow so long on facebook where when you're on the network we don't have to worry about time i can go two hours if we need to hmm. But I won't. I don't know why I didn't get a coffee cup for that because that's so big. But it's getting hot. But I should have had a coffee cup. So on tonight, we are starting and launching a study that I know is going to be a blessing to many of you. And, um, you know, we're just going to. Oh, OK, I got it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Hold on. Oh, hold on. I got it. Just keep going. Got to see. I got it. Where is my webcam? If you can give me my webcam right quick. I think it's in the briefcase. I have an excellent idea because I do not want to lose those people that are watching on, sec on uh, social media. And I know exactly what to do. I know what to do. I know what to. This is, this is good. That's coming there. And so y'all are watching. So hold on. Oh, I know y'all are busy and I thank you for indulging us for this time to be able to do this. This is what happens when you start thinking when you're doing and what you're doing. And you do this a lot. <laughs> technology. Technology is something. Okay, let me come back and let me try something here past and let's hope this works I might through one thing but I'm going to try something else and let's see what happens here see how I look where it looks and uh, adjust that camera Oh, it just wants to act crazy tonight. Listen, the devil is a liar. So those of you that are watching on the Bodybuilders Television Network, you can see that we are trying to get some things through, experiencing some glitches here, but it's going to be okay because these things are going to work out. So let me try this through here and see what I get and if I get and how that works. Okay, let's go over there. Aha! Ha ha! Somebody say thank you. And five, three, two. 
My sister gonna say I ate on my lipstick off. Hi, hi, hi. I am sorry I'm so late. Those of you that are joining us on social media, those of you that have been watching us on NBC TV, you've been watching for about 15 minutes. But for those who are watching us here, good evening. This is Dr. Brenda Miller Chambliss. Hello, God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, Sister Linda, we met you today at the meet and greet in Cherokee. God bless you. Glad you're tuning in. For those that are tuning in, once again, I apologize. We are having some technical issues, but we figured out how to do it. And I know what to do now from here on in. And we won't have this here problem again. So what is happening, we were, are, if those of you that are watching us, on embassy tv we're coming to you directly from the network so that is for those that subscribe to the bodybuilders television network or those that are watching us through our other platforms whether it be on uh, roku or uh, google chrome or any of the social devices that people may be watching on and tuning in and watching there so you can watch us on embassy tv.net and those that are watching on that for others that we're using social media to reach out to you are watching us on social media on tonight and we thank God for that give me just a second as more as we're getting people to go on log on you are not gonna want to miss tonight I'm telling you tonight is powerful tonight is awesome we're gonna be talking about women and revival where are they how will we be used where do we fit in god bless you come on in pastor eddie god bless you watching from liberia uh apostle lori god bless you one of our own is pa apostle pat around i hope so pastor hugh anderson joining in all the saints that are joining in and coming in on tonight we thank god for you revival 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 we've talked about revival we've heard about revival we've sang about revival but <coughs> what is revival tonight we're going to be launching a series now i want to know this is twofold this is a series that's taught for our local church the embassy christian center we are located in whittier north carolina just off the boundary of the eastern band of Cherokee Indians. I want to make sure that that is level and I'm not looking down at it. Uh, we're, we're located at the boundary of the eastern band of Cherokee Indians. Those that are watching us uh, from that area, you will know exactly where we are and in that area. And God has blessed us tremendously. And so we were over today. We had our first meet and greet on um they sponsored it miss sandy was there and they sponsored that for us and co-sponsored and we had our very first meet and greet at the on the reservation we are so excited about what god is doing with and on the res we are on the reservation and we are loving it today we had the opportunity because many of you know we've been doing missions to liberia for many years well, sometimes if the finance isn't there for the shipping, we've saying, God, we've got to move these clothes, these toys, these books, these donations that we're getting. And God opened the door and sent us a platform. <coughs> and now we have two powerful organizations that we are partnering with directly on the reservation. Uh, great outreach. And we're excited about that. Uh, and you'll be hearing more about them. One is the Children's Home Society. One is the area for the abused women. And we're taking clothes and shoes and books and other items and things to the reservation. And being out today with that and on top of the meet and greet, we got in late. We got in just enough to change and get ready for tonight. But hey, that's called what? Church. <laughs> How many times have we been doing that? That is called church. And we do it and we love it. <clears throat> Brianna, oh, that's this is she's watching. <clears throat> Brianna Lambert, she's at the Birdtown um, Community Center in Cherokee. Powerful, she has been such a blessing to us in reaching out. Listen, y'all do not, y'all have no idea how powerful Cherokee, the home of the Eastern Band of Air, uh, Cherokee Indians, is. It is a phenomenal area. It is a great city. When you come to our events that we have coming up. If you stay, you're gonna be staying on the reservation. And our host hotel 
is the Fairfield Inn. And it is powerful, lovely Sandy, her staff and team, and those are there. And once we fill that up, we're going to go to the next one. And we're going to be doing a hotel after hotel. For somebody asked, well, do y'all still live in Murphy? Yes, we live in Murphy, North Carolina. And this is our home. But, you know, uh, I'm just going to live at that. We live here. We were here for six years, going into seven years. And, you know, we done pulled that tree up and we dung it enough times. And so God opened the door and ministry and opportunities and excitement is happening in that region, in that area. Franklin, Silva, Waysville, Colloway, Nantahala. We are excited and Cherokee, the home of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. You are going to love it. You're going to be seeing things that are happening there. What's going to be going on? And so when you come to our events, that is where you're going to be staying right on the res. Listen, these are, I, can I just talk a minute about my native brothers and sisters? Can I do that? Let me tell you something. Lord have mercy. These are some friendly people, loving people kind people, community people, and we are one. Different colors on the outside, but we got one blood. My God, we've got one blood. And they're welcoming y'all. They're looking forward to y'all coming. So when you come for events and things, you need to make sure you make plans to come and be with us and stay at the Fairfield Inn and visit. We're going to be talking even more. Uh, I was over at the uh, One Feather today. That's the main media uh, publication for the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. I was over there today uh, with Scott and dealing with some of our friends and folks and stuff from over there. And getting ready, you're going to be hearing more. So look there. When you come to Revival in the Smokies in October, when you come to Revival in the Smokies, you are going to have a great time. So we're talking about just that word. And so tonight kicks off a 16 week series. That's right. For the next 16 weeks, we're going to be talking about women and revival. Where do we fit in? Women and revival. Where do we fit in? You know, and I, I have, you know, even though it's a Bible study series, I, I each week we want to launch out with a different theme that we're going to be talking about. So tonight, as I start, we're going to sort of just set a foundation on defining revival. What is revival? What type of revival are we talking about and how it's going to be effective? You know, we use that term revival, but you know, it's an often used term. There are all kinds of revivals. There's revivals of rock music. There's uh, revivals of um, other issues. There's all kinds of revivals. We talk about those, but we're talking about revival that affects and impacts the women of God and the men of God and how we are affected and impacted by revival. How are we effective and impacted by revival? You know, Dr. C, I think what I did, if you can send me that last information, my notes that I had over there, I'm in desperate need of my notes. And I, if you can just email to me over here, I was rushing and I didn't email them to myself. I have them on that computer. But listen, when you really look and come to understand about revival and what it means, as it relates to us. So I'm going to be talking tonight a little bit about the foundation of revival and what it means about women, women. And I'm talking about the significant of insignificance, the significant of insignificance. You know, many times we don't understand it. Um, we look at it, but when it comes to women in a lot of areas, and a lot of issues, there's been a lot of areas that we have really not been known, not been visible, not been named, uh, <laughs> didn't really know too much who we were or those things, but it was about insignificant people, insignificant situations, and in those areas, 
And sometimes you may think, I, I don't count. I don't fit in. How am I important? Where do I fit in on the scheme of things? Let me tell you something. You are important. And you do fit in. You are very much so important. And you fit in. You have a major role. Just email it to me. You have a major role in this great end time move of God. You have a major role. You are not insignificant. Many people may not, you know, know who you are. Many people may not know. You may feel like I'm not important because I don't have a big job. I don't have a big name. You know, a lot of people don't know about me. Even in church, a lot of women feel like, well, you know, um, I'm, I don't have a title. You know, nobody knows who I am because I don't have or I don't carry a title. And that is farthest thing from the truth. You know, I, and I feel so bad. All of my notes, I'm over here and my notes and everything I had lined up on that computer. And I did not send them to myself and I'm hoping they're getting set to me. Because I don't want to sound like I'm rambling, which to me, I sound like I am. Let me see. Did they come up? I think. Wait a minute. Let's see. Do I hear the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. My notes are here. They arrived. Okay. So, there are many people that did substantial and significant things. But they were insignificant. And a lot of women have done significant things. They've played major roles. But many people did not know about them. They did not know who they were. Did They did not know what they accomplished. And so as it comes in, and we're talking about revival, I want to begin to just set the stage. As I said, it's going to be 16 weeks. In the next 16 weeks, we're going to be talking about revival we're going to be talking about revival and we're talking about revival because coming up and i'm going to drop that in in october the 23rd through the 27th it's going to be revival in the smokies that's going to be here uh in whittier north carolina at our campus there it's going to be powerful the men and women of god that are coming in for that meeting uh, Apostle Fred Berry from the Azusa Street Mission founder took over that that whole move of God what happened there they do tours there powerful Fred and Wilma Berry they're going to be coming you knew her from the Bay of the Holy Spirit revival you knew her from the Brownsville revival and now she is going to be here she is ministering now herself along with Nathan Morris uh, Lydia Stanley Morrow is going to be here with us. And I tell you what, it's going to be some preaching, praying, praising going on in the house. Also, Stella Award winner Philip Carter is going to be coming in with that good old hometown traditional solid hand slapping, foot stomping gospel music. Philip is going to be here. Also, along with that, she has been a part since 2005. 2005. Zoretta Hopkins, I tell you, she's ours. She is ours. Zoretta is powerful, anointed, gifted, and she's going to be here singing and ministering through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, uh, teaching will be Dr. Twenty Roberts. Those that are in the Church of God in Christ will know her because she is the head teacher that heads up and teaching the Sunday school curriculum for pastors, leaders, and all. She teaches that. Uh, Rel Buchanan, Minister Mel Buchanan, he has, Minister Rel Buchanan, he has a new CD that is out. And I tell you, his music, uh, hi Rel, I see you joined just on time. His music, go ahead and shoot the name of your two albums up right now. I don't have it, the latest one. We were talking last night, and this is what the brother said to me. He said, Dr. B, because he has a gift of playing that just leads you right into worship. I mean, you just get all up in there. And I said to him, I said, you know, you're going to be playing for the intercession as we're ushering in the presence of God and all that. He said, Dr. B, let me tell you something. My hands not going to get tired. I can play for hours because when I'm in the spirit, I'm just playing and worshiping. And that truly blessed me. 
He is going to be there already as well from, let me see if I can say it right, Apostle Faith, lest I say it wrong and get that right. She is going to be there to uh, talk and usher in and share about revival. She's traveled the globe with the Faith Apostolic Hub. She has traveled the globe and I'm going to make sure Let me get, oh, wait, how about doing this? Why don't you just pull the flyer up, Dr. Brenda, and look at it. It's right there. And blow it up big enough for you to see. Why don't I pull up my glasses? Okay. Dr. Sylvia Pristel. Ah, that's what happens when you put your glasses on. Dr. Sylvia Pristel will be there with us. Also, Dr. Ronnie Poe has a testimony, okay? He's going through rehab right now. And he wasn't sure even if he could be here in October. And I told him, I said, it's June. God don't be done working out. He is a new double amputee. But he has a powerful anointing. Dr. Poe has a a new book that's out on glossolalia, the speaking in tongues. And we wanted him to come for two reasons. Number one, to let the devil know he may have been down, but he's not out. We're going to lift our brother up. How many of us, when our brothers and sisters are down, we just leave them down? But we invited them to come. Come on, if you if your prosthesis are there, if not, if you're in a wheelchair, you just come on because if you can speak, the anointing and the glory is going to be there. So we're going to be talking for the next 16 weeks about revival. The next 16 weeks, we are talking about revival. God is going to be moving at revival in the Smokies. You need to be there as well. Many of you may or may not be familiar with the Azusa Street Revival. I've got to bring that in just a little bit to talk about it on tonight because we're going to be going there. This revival in Los Angeles, California in 1906 led by a one-eyed black man that was Apostle Bishop Dr. William J. Seymour. That revival, that move, that meeting over a hundred years ago in 1906 birthed a movement, a classical Pentecostal movement that went around the world. In 1906, it started at a little house on Buddy Bray Street, Street and then it moved to this old former barn, old Methodist church, old stable on 312 Azusa Street. And the rest, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about what God did at Azusa Street on the next 16 weeks. But also, as we get closer, we're going to also talk about a little known revival that was birthed right here in Western North Carolina in the town where we live in Murphy, North Carolina in 1896, the Shearer Schoolhouse Revival. Well, what happened in 1896 that the Shearer Schoolhouse Revival, they were speaking in tongues and black and white and Cherokee were coming together and the Holy Ghost was moving. What happened in 1896 that did not happen and 10 years later were birthed and moved on the west coast we're going to be talking about that in the next 16 weeks because i want to tell you if you're in this region especially north carolina south carolina uh alabama tennessee what's my other areas uh kentucky all of those areas virginia if you're right in this hub right here let me tell you there's a move in the southeast region there's a move of god that's getting ready to happen like you've never seen before but especially in the western north carolina in the north carolina area in this region we've got 16 weeks i'm just giving you little tidbits tonight of what we're going to be talking about and what we're going to be sharing in these next 16 weeks we're going to be talking about what's getting ready to happen because when revival comes Denominational barriers are torn down. Economic barriers are torn down. Geographic barriers are torn down. Racial barriers are torn down. And gender barriers are torn down. Whenever there's getting ready to be a mighty move of God, and we're going to be talking about that, 
in the Bible, in our countries, wherever there's been a mighty move of God, there's a woman somewhere. There's a woman somewhere praying. There's a someone, woman somewhere interceding. There's a so, woman somewhere in business financing the gospel. We're going to be talking about that over the next 16 weeks as we prepare for revival in the Smokies. You need to go and learn, go to the website, go to our websites and learn more about this ministry. Our focus is media, evangelism, and discipleship, teaching, training, and equipping from a classical Pentecostal perspective. We have Bodybuilders Television Network, our Bodybuilders Television Network, 24-7, streaming 24-7, classical Pentecostal programming that you will not be able to see anywhere else. We don't compromise when it comes to the gospel. We make no compromises whatsoever. So we're going to be talking over these next 16 weeks about that, about revival, about the move of God. We're going to be speaking to the body, but we're also going to be talking to the women and we're going to be talking. I know pastors, men are going to be listening. Let me say this to you. I said it on today. If you want your church to grow, let the women be activated. Let the women pray. Let the women serve. Let the women move. Some of you, your church is going to not grow or be stagnant, not grow or not grow anymore. And just, you have, um, What's that? You've come, huh? Plateaued. Thanks, man of God. You have plateaued and you're not going any further. Why? Because you've not allowed the women to function in their capacities. And I'm not just talking about young women. I'm talking about the mothers. Oh my God. Send the church mothers back into the church. I take a good, strong church mother any day. Give me a good praying church mother. We used to call it mother wit. Give me a praying church mother that has discernment. Pastors, what you need is a church mother praying for you. Think about it. Do you have church mothers? Do you have mothers praying for you? Do you have church mothers? You know, the pastors used to didn't even have to come to church uh, for noonday prayer or whatever. The mothers were praying. The mothers opened the door. The mothers were in the church. They were having noonday prayer. Pastors, while you were out, the mothers were in the church praying. Well, who's in your church praying now? Do you have the women? Are the women praying? Call for the old. Listen, where are the older saints? Mothers, listen, you, the devil is a liar. Somewhere, and somebody told you that you were no longer useful. Someone told you that you were not significant. You could not be used because you didn't know the latest steps and, and you didn't have the latest style and you didn't have the latest look. So you felt like you could not be used. You felt like you were insignificant. But I want to tell you right now that God is calling for and needing call for the church mothers. There is a need there is a need for the church mothers to be back in the church. If you want revival, bring the church mothers back. Open the doors and let the mothers come back in and start praying. Let the mothers come in and start moaning. Let the mothers come in and start interceding and for the children and for the, the adults and, and for the area. If you've got a lot of drugs in your area, if you've got a lot of poverty in your area, you've got a lot, a lot of unemployment in your area, call for the women. This is a women's movement. I'm talking about scripturally and through history. We're going to look at the role of women. Women in revival. Where do we fit in? If you want to see a move of God in your area, if you want to see a move of God in your city, if you want to see a move of God in your church, we're believing God for the Embassy Christian Center. Church of God in Christ, we are taking, we're believing God for this Western North Carolina region. We're looking within two to three hours from us. Listen, if you in a city and it's dead, drive on over to us. If your church is not empowered and impact, come on over to the embassy. I'm believing, I'm praying, and it starts with me. Dr. Brenda is praying. Dr. Brenda is interceding. Uh, Dr. Brenda is, is covering. Uh, Apostle uh, Lori Grant, Lori is praying. 
She's out walking. Yesterday she said, Dr. Brenda, I was walking in the water and, and praying in the area and praying in streets. Listen, you've got to go out there and pray. Let the women begin to pray. Ladies, why do you think that the enemy brings so much between us? We are bickering. She said something about my hair. She, she looked at my kids funny. She talked about my job. Uh, when I came and spoke for, when she spoke, I was there. When I spoke, nobody was there. All this little silly, petty, female -ish stuff. Come on now. See, this is the kind of thing that the enemy fuels on. Because he knows where there is unity, there is strength. People get a group of praying women together and see what happens. Get a group of women together that's fasting and see what happens. Get a group of women together that are believing God and see what happens. What happens? Tell me about revival. Women of revival. Where do we fit in? We fit in in revival because we're the foundation. We're in there praying. We're in there interceding. And you know what? We're coming from our spirits because we're very, very spiritual. We're emotional. We can feel it. We're not ashamed to cry and to cry out to God. And we're getting all up in there. So women, 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 we're believing God. The women of God need to pray. Uh, Supervisor uh, Vanessa Winbush Gatlin every morning. She's praying. She's up praying. Listen, she can't be the only one praying. She's praying all over. But are you praying? Are you praying for your church? Are you praying for your pastor? If you are the pastor, do you have other people praying for you? Are you praying in your community? Are you praying? Second Chronicles 7 and 14 said this. If, 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 if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, turn Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and then will I heal the land. Dr. Will and I, we're standing. We're standing for the healing of our land. We're standing for the healing of the nations. We're believing God for healing right where we live, right where we are. This area needs much healing. A lot of pain, a lot of hurt has gone on in the Ch uh, Cherokee County area. What happened in Cherokee County? Well, Cherokee County is where the, one of the first uh, ships of slaves and African Amer and Americans, African Americans were sent to Liberia. They were put on slave ships from right here in this area, in the Cherokee County, Murphy, North Carolina area. What else happened, Dr. Brenda, here? You've heard of it, the Trail of Tears, right here, where those, oh my God, uh, Caleb ran that, Caleb McCoy, I think he's out on the West Coast right now, uh, running, but he ran that and went that area. They took our brothers and sisters, our, our, our First Nations, I, I try not to say uh, American Indians because I've come to find out. <laughs> it's funny. They said, we, we're not American Indians. We're Americans. We were here first. <laughs> Indians are from envy, India. We are Americans. But so when they took them off of their land and put them on a trail and sent them to Oklahoma and those that did not leave the Lakota, wait, unless I say it right, I know they're Lumbee, there are Kohari, uh, Sister Laurie, help me out. There's Kohari, you're Kohari, there's Lumbee, there's uh, some Navajo. We have the Seminoles in Florida. I'm a Gator, but Seminoles, okay, bad joke. But we have the Seminoles in Florida and others. This land, God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from them heaven, then will I heal the land. This land needs healing. The healing of the nations, the black nation, <clears throat> the red nation, Cherokee, Lumbee, Navajo, Lakota, 
You name the Indian, the tribes, our white brothers and sisters. When God brings, when we come together under one blood in unity, the devil has to flee. Because when we come together, finances come. Uh, economic barriers are broken down. That's why the devil is fighting to keep it from unity. But we're bringing unity in the area and it comes through the gifting and baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God Apostle Fred Berry has joined us. We're going to be doing an interview on tomorrow. You're going to be hearing more from him and the Azusa Street Mission. This is what happened at Azusa Street, people. You've got to come to Revival in the Smokies. You've got to hear him not only preach the gospel, but we're going to be talking and you're going to be hearing about more and more of what happened there. And this next move of God, Women of Revival, where do we fit in? We're going to be talking about this young teenage girl. I don't want to start too quick. I almost started with that tonight, but I want how a insignificant young African-American female you hear about what happened in 1906 at Azusa, but what happened in 1905 before Pastor Seymour even went there? That's what I want you to know on tonight. That's what I want you to understand, okay? That's what you need to know, excuse me, and understand. Mm. You need to know and understand that especially as women, women we have a, and we play a pivotal and unique role in the next move of God that's coming. Yeah, I said it, I'm standing on it, and I'll say it again. Come on now. Women play a pivotal role. Why do you think that the enemy is trying to get them all off? Women, you've got to know who you are. Listen, when you know who you are, you're going to dress different. When you know who you are, you're going to walk different. When you know who you are, you're going to have a different attitude. When you know who you are, because you're going to see that God wants to bring the glory. Women of God, the glory that's a natural attribute so much to us. When you give that to God, my gosh, when you give that glory to God, glory to God, women, 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 you are necessary. That's why we're calling for the morning women. We're calling for the holy women. We're calling for the church mothers. We need that senior generation to teach us and to part into us so we can part into future generations. We need to leave a legacy for our children and our children's children. I'm not just talking about money in the bank and they need that. I'm not just talking about investment or investment property. They need that. But I'm talking about a legacy of holiness. Oh my God. We have got to see in this last days, and we're going to be talking about that, and you're going to be seeing more of that as we're preparing and talking in revival in the Smokies that's coming October the 23rd through the 27th. We're going to be here. That's not showing up like I want to. It's not showing up now, but I don't care. I'm going to keep moving with it. Listen, you need to come and prepare to be in revival in, in the Smokies. The men and the women of God are coming together, but we're going to have sessions for women. These next 16 weeks are going to be crucial. We're believing God for a move that is going to change our area. And what happened at Azusa? People came from all around the world to Azusa. They were filled. They were taught. They were equipped. They were empowered. And then what did they do? Did they stay there? They went home. They went home. People, we want to see you prepared, equipped, taught, trained. So when you go home, you will go home with a understanding, with a fresh anointing. Listen, and I want to say this, I'm hearing this in the spirit. Before a lot of your churches can get revived, before a lot of other areas get revived, revival starts within. And when we have that inner revival, when we spend that time with God, and God go in and clean up and cut off, and man, I'm still doing spring cleaning, trying to get things straightened up and it's like, good Lord, this is those cobwebs. Like, where did they come from, Lord? What kind of spiders are them? I don't want to see the spiders because some of them cobwebs are gigantic.
but you're still clean. Well, if what happens when God goes in and cleans up the cobwebs in your spirit, the cobwebs in your life? Listen, when revival comes forth, this fresh wind and move of revival that's coming like never before, it's going to be ushered in. Yes, I'm hearing this. I've got scripture to back me up. Over the next 16 weeks, as we get ready to build up and come for revival in the Smokies in October, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be saying, we're going to be hearing, and we're going to be talking about the fresh wind, the outpouring that's coming. But the Bible says, let everything be done decently in order. You think God is going to send an outpouring? Where are people going? Look around in some of these churches. I wouldn't send people into some of these churches. I'm sorry. Yes, I said it. I wouldn't be like, mm mm. Baby, just go ahead and, if that's the best your city got, stay home and watch on TV, get you a few friends, and then find a place to go to and drive to you a place. Do not settle. Don't just go to Mud and Papa and them church just because I went there. Well, when I got, when I was 12 years old, they took me to the church and I stayed there. Seriously? Is that enough for you? So, no, we're going to be talking. The stage is being set. For revival, revival when God shows up. Our homes need revival. God knows our churches need revival. Hear me when I say this. Our music needs revival. It's a shame. Pastor was listening on our way home from Cherokee. We were on the reservation today. We had a beautiful meet and greet. And when we were coming home off the rest, Pastor had gospel music playing and everything. And I asked him, I said, would you mind if I turn that? He said, no, I don't mind. I said, it's, it's kind of crowding my spirit with where I am for tonight, trying to get ready in the word. <laughs> and my computer just died on me, uh, trying to get ready in the word. When we did that, because now that shut off my internet and everything, my Facebook and everything is off. So everything is off. So I don't know if I'm on on that one. Yeah, I don't know. That was not really broadcasting. That was just more so recording. That one's not going anywhere. So, but we're just, when we got ready to be on. <sighs> Honey, it's too much. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to let it go because I told you it wasn't going to work. Going. I'm recording. Don't be defeated. What you don't realize is all those people are lost. It's okay. I'll start over. I want to. It's 8 o'clock anyway. Listen. My notes are not here. I don't have anything. It's still not up yet. Just give it a minute. Honey, it's okay. Just cut it off. I'm just going to put a note out there because it's going to take a good...